Hi there, in this video I'm going to take you through the process of creating a Power BI dashboard that contains an embedded Power app. We're also going to use Microsoft Flow to send the data from the Power app to the Power BI service using the API. So the data set that I have here is a very simple bicycle inventory data set, ID, category, selling price, and the quantity on hand for uh, each of the bikes that we have loaded here. So very simple data set. Uh, I've already loaded this data into the Power BI service. So uh, here you can see it's already loaded as a new service. The key aspect to this data set is that it has the push API access enabled here. So that's a key distinction to work through this demo is that the data set has to be enabled through the push API. Uh, it can't be previously loaded through a database or an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, in my case, I used Alteryx to load the data in. That's my go-to tool. But any tool that loads it into the API uh, would work here. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay with the Power BI service. I'm not going to use Power BI desktop here. So we're going to go uh, within this data set. We're going to create a report based on this data set. I'm just going to create some very simple visuals here. So the first one is going to be a card that just has a distinct count of the ID numbers that are in this data set. Uh, the second thing we'll do is add another card that has the sum of the quantity on hand. All right, so those two visuals here, and I'm going to move them over so I can make room for my Power App once I've got that added. And then we'll just do a simple donut chart here over on the side, and we'll do uh, a count of the IDs by product category. Okay, so road, leisure, children's bikes, hybrids, and mountain bikes. Uh, very simple visual there. All right, so I have the report built. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll save it. I'm going to call it Bicycle Inventory. All right, and uh, save it off. Uh, we'll leave the editing view open for now. I don't, I'm going to come back to it in a minute. And now we're going to go over to Microsoft Flow. All right, so again, if you're not familiar with the site, just Google Microsoft Flow, you'll find it. Uh, once on that site, we're going to create a flow from blank. So create a, a flow from scratch. And flow works by having a trigger that initiates the flow and then subsequent actions that we're going to take. So to trigger this flow, we're going to come from a Power App. So I'm going to go and just search for Power Apps in here and uh, I'll get a connector here it has triggers and actions and we need a trigger to start with so we're going to start with of course the trigger for the power app and there's nothing else I need to do uh, from the power apps perspective I do need to add an action step so we'll do a new step and we'll choose add an action and the action that we're going to add here is to add rows to power bi so I'm going to search for power space bi and you'll see there is a trigger here, but I'm in the actions portion, so I'm going to choose actions, add rows to a data set. Okay. The settings that I have to have are a workspace where the data set exists, and in my case, it's in my personal workspace. I didn't move it to a different workspace. The data set is that bicycle inventory, and you'll notice there's only three data sets listed here, even though if I go back to my data sets list. I have a lot more data sets than that listed here, but that's because only three of them are push enabled. All right, so that's why I'm only getting the list of three here. So push enabled data set, and then the table within that data set is bicycle inventory as well. There's only one table in there. The four fields that are in the data set will then populate in the list, and if I click within each data set here, I will get a little prompt that says Ask in Power Apps, and that's exactly what I want to do. So for each of those, I want to click Ask in Power Apps, and it's going to set up the placeholder there that's going to be added to Power Apps when I create it. So that's all I have to do for each of those. Save that off. It's saving it. I'm going to go and I'm going to edit the title here, and I'm going to call this Bicycle uh, Inventory Flow. And we'll go ahead and save it again. And it's saved. We'll go back to my list of, of uh, app power or flows, and uh, we'll see it listed there. Uh, and we're good to go. 
now I can start my Power App. So again, Microsoft Power Apps, Google it if you don't know the page. And we're going to say start from blank. And when I start from blank, I have the option of making it a phone layout or a desktop slash tablet layout. And for this demo, I want the phone layout. And then we'll say make this app. And it's going to launch Power Apps and create a blank canvas for me to start pulling in some of the inputs that I need. All right, so I'm going to expand this a bit so we can see what we want. So I've got four fields that I'm pulling in. So I'm going to insert text fields here, a text input. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. Okay, so four text inputs. I'm not going to make this that pretty. It's not going to be a gorgeous looking app to start with since I'm doing it quickly, but I know I need an ID. So we'll add an ID field in here. Uh, I need a category. So I'll add the category in. I'll put a placeholder so I know what each of these are. Uh, and then the next one is a price. So add the price and then the last piece that I need I believe is going to be the quantity on hand and I'm just going to call this inventory just to keep it short. All right, so inventory. Okay, that looks good. So I've got the four text input boxes I need to be able to send or capture the data and then send it to the Power BI service via flow. Now I need a button that's actually going to do the action. So we'll add a button in here and we'll drop it down just below, give it some space. I'm going to edit this and uh, call it uh, submit button. And then for the text that's going to be here, I'm just going to label it submit. All right, so that's in there. So the button's there. Now I need to tie it to an action. So with the button selected, we're going to go to the action menu and choose flows. And in the list that populates for data, I should see my bicycle inventory flow there. So I'm going to select it. It's adding the flow and the connection within Power Apps. And then I get a prompt that says I need to put the parameters in to this run function and connect it to my text inputs here. And that's really simple because I just need id.text, comma, category, dot text, comma, price, dot text, and then the last one, inventory, dot text. Okay, so that's containing all of the data that I'm gonna send in this run command through the submit button on that action. All right, so everything there is good. I've got the basic layout done. Uh, take it a step further. I could reset the form after it's been submitted uh, so it doesn't just keep containing the same data again, but I'm not gonna do that right now. So we'll leave it the way it is. I'm gonna go to the file menu, save the app, and we'll call it uh, bicycle inventory app, and we'll save. All right, once it's done saving, <clears throat> I can go back into Power BI and I'm gonna go to the report and we're going to edit the report here. And I need to add the Power Apps visual. So I'm gonna click the ellipsis, the three dots and import from Marketplace. And to search here, I'm gonna search for Power Apps visual and I'm gonna add it to the list of visuals that I can use. I'll click click the visual and then I just need to drag in a field to trigger the visual to run. All right, and then we're gonna choose an app. I don't need to create a new one, I've already done that. So we'll choose an app and I have my bicycle inventory app here. And we'll go ahead and add the bicycle inventory app. Uh, I've, I've already created it and been published so I can skip this step. And then we're just gonna make this visual a tad bit bigger uh, for layout purposes. That looks fine. All right, now I'm not going to run anything from the report. So this is another uh, important distinction here. So I'm going to save save this report. We'll go back to the reading view. Uh, I'm All of this works from the dashboard, not from the report, at least at the time that this video was created. The functionality that I'm trying to show with real-time updates doesn't work on the report side, but it works on the dashboard side. So I'm just going to go through and pin 
each of these visuals. So I want to pin this to a new dashboard called Bicycle uh, Inventory Dashboard. All right, so we'll pin the visual there. We also want to pin the count. So we'll pin that, we'll pin the quantity, and we're also going to go through and pin the donut chart here. So we'll pin that as well. All right, so that's all done. Uh, I'm done. I'm done pinning it. I can go to the dashboard itself. I'm going to make this particular tile a little bit bigger uh, so we can see it there. So I've got the app embedded. I've got the counts and the donut chart. Now remember the count is 24. The quantity in hand is 106. And I'm going to add a road uh, item. And so you can see that uh, what I've got here is 97. Uh, and so I should see that change when I make a make an addition here. So I'm going to add a 25th ID into here. Uh, the category we're going to call it road. The price um, I'll set it at 500. Why not? And the inventory uh, we're going to say that there are four. So when I submit this, I should see the number jump to 25. The quantity on hand should go to 110, and the 97 uh, road should change. So we'll submit there and I should see it update immediately there we go 25 110 and the road went from 97 to 122 okay so quick integration building the the app the flow and then into the dashboard now the one caveat to all of this is it doesn't reflect what I just did inside the report so I want to make that clear to everybody. It only works on the dashboard side for now. If I want these changes reflected inside the report, I have to refresh it here. And then I will, I'll see the change reflected immediately. In fact, if I do this again, uh, 26 will add road, price 500, inventory is 5, and I submit this now, uh, you won't see the change here. Uh, it's not changing at all. I have to refresh it in order to get that item to update. So important distinction between the way dashboards work and the way that reports work. If you want a quick overview of those two items, the dashboard and reports, I have a separate video up that explains how they're sort of designed and what the methodology and thinking is behind the difference in those two items. All right. As usual, as I said before, subscribe, hit the notification button, drop a like, and leave me a comment below if you have any suggestions or any things you want me to brush up on or questions you want me to answer. Thanks.